During October, we focus on the macabre. Monsters, demons, and things that go bump in the night. One of the most popular topics for this time of year is zombies, the undead, rotting corpses shambling after their prey. Rot is a natural occurrence after death. Time will take its toll on what was once living. But what happens when a land without death feels the effect of rot? We know Radon became a mindless creature after overexposure to Melania's rot. But how did the wildlife react to this change in their environment? What happens to the creatures that cannot die when they're exposed to a plague that breaks down their bodies and minds? Do they simply decay into nothing? Or do they adapt? Today we're going to look at a few different creatures roaming the land of Kaled and look at how the rot has affected them. If you like our content, don't forget to subscribe. We have more spooky videos throughout the month and we can't wait to bring them to you. Now let's dive into what lurks in Kaled. The first creature we wanted to take a look at is the horrifying giant dogs we find throughout Kaled. For whatever reason, these creatures have adapted to the land. They are not particularly decayed or hampered by the rot around them. They have evolved to have enormous heads and hind legs, and their mange has spread, leaving very little hair on their bodies. At this point, they are beginning to resemble dinosaurs as opposed to canines, but they still retain their dog-like features. These dogs can even be seen feasting on various corpses or searching for food, which shows us they can not only survive the rot, but they can actually consume it without killing themselves. Why is it that these giant dogs are able to survive the rot? We think we have an answer. There is an enemy that can be found in many areas of the lands between, the rotten stray. The rotten stray ashes can be found on the corpse of a dog, and tell us more about these creatures. Spirit of a stray dog corrupted by the scarlet rot. Though it is only a small creature, it is as violent as it is nimble, and its fangs fester with poisonous rot. So we know these dogs already carry the corruption of scarlet rot. Logically, we can assume that a creature that is already carrying this disease within it would not be affected in the same way as those who have never been exposed. Perhaps when the rotten strays that were already present in Kaled felt the effects of Melania's scarlet Aeonia, they simply gained strength from it. After all, in the various lores of FromSoft games, the stronger one becomes, the larger they tend to be. There is one unique giant dog that can be found in Kaled, just outside of Gowrie's shack. It wears a spiked collar and will not attack unless we come too close to its territory. What makes this particular dog different from any other in the game is that it has the ability to spray scarlet rot from its mouth, afflicting our tarnish with the disease. We believe this goes to show how these dogs feed off of their attachment to the rot. As the one likely tended to by Gowry as his personal pet, has evolved further than any other. Knowing that Gowry is actually a facade the kindred of rot use, we can assume this dog is simply further along in its evolution than the others we encounter. It is also worth mentioning that these giant dogs can be found in the mountaintop of giants. This could be seen as a contradiction to our understanding of their origins. However, we have to keep in mind that aside from Kaled, the mountaintop is the closest land with dogs to have a concentrated amount of rot nearby, housed within Mikola's Halig tree. Our next enemy encountered in Kaled is unaffected by rot, and may have been created specifically because the sorcerers of Celia feared what would happen to them should they journey out into the lands themselves. The Avianet soldiers are puppets designed specifically by the Selian sorcerers. They wear the marionette soldier bird helm, which is described as a metal helm formed in the likeness of the face of a bird, worn by Avianet soldiers crafted to serve the sorcerers. The construction of this helm is remarkably crude. For a doll, the only thing that matters is that it does not break. These enemies can also drop Kuko Glintstone which makes it clear that they were imbued with magic and brought to life through sorcery. While the story behind Celia and its ghostly inhabitants could be a video on its own, we think these Avianet soldiers are a good example of adapting to a life surrounded by rot. They were made with the intention to have some kind of protective force moving through the fetid lands. 
We can encounter them close to town, guarding the areas dripping in rot, but they take no damage from it. Being constructs, non-organic beings, the rot does not affect them the same way it does our tarnished. We can even find spirit ash of these enemies in Raya Lucaria Academy that clarifies their purpose. Spirits of marionette soldiers with avian features, they were created to serve a sorcerer. Equipped with long haft scythes, they also attack from the skies by lobbing fire pots, can sometimes malfunction when damaged. Further proof that they were created by Selian sorcerers. Perhaps their equipped fire pots were meant to be used strategically against the rot itself, as we know that the rot is susceptible to flames. Another reason we think these enemies were crafted like birds comes in the form of the giant crows. These crows seem to have a natural resistance to Scarlet Rot, as they can thrive feeding on the corpses of the dead in Kaled. Perhaps this is where the Avianet soldier's resistance to rot comes from. Lastly, we wanted to talk about decaying Exikes, the only rot-infected dragon we can find in Elden Ring. Near the Kaled Highway south side of Grace, we can find this decaying, scarlet rot-afflicted dragon, defending the nearby temple of Dragon Communion. His flesh is pure white, having lost any pigment it once had, and what's left of it is tearing, showing the rotting muscles beneath. His mouth pours scarlet rot, and it looks as though his eyes are completely rotted out, leaving empty sockets. All along his body, wings, and horn, you can see what looks like white branches growing, possibly the same fungus we can see blooming from areas infested with rot. He is a sad sight, a majestic dragon who was likely caught in the fallout of the Aeonia Bloom, now a barely living force knowing only vengeance. The only item in-game discussing Exikes is his spell, Exikes's Decay. This is a superior incantation of Dragon Communion, channels the power of Exikes, the Decaying, transforms Caster into a dragon to spew Scarlet Rot Breath from above. Exikes, Dragon Communion Revenger, did not forget his hatred, even as he succumbed to the Scarlet Rot. Given this explanation, it seems likely that before Exikes was brought to this lowly place, he hunted those who engaged in Dragon Communion. Exikes was a Revenger, taking the lives of those who killed his brethren for their power and waited for them at the Temple of Dragon Communion, a place they'd have to visit to make use of the hearts ripped from the dragons they defeated. Perhaps it was this burning hatred that keeps Exikes alive and fighting, still defending this sacred temple as the rot eats him from within. Not only did he refuse to yield to the Aeonia's power, he harnessed it for himself, as another method of punishing those who wish to gain the power of dragons. The dangers of Kaled are apparent from the moment we step foot into this area of the Lands Between, but the dread we feel upon seeing these fetid, rotting enemies is something new we were not likely to experience before this point. The curse of the Scarlet Rot, eating away at the denizens of a land without death, is disturbing on its own, but the fact that some creatures can thrive here, or even harness the power of the Rot, is terrifying. Whether it's the soldiers designed to resist it, the dogs who have learned to live within it, or the dragon cursed to bear its power. The Scarlet Rot is a power to fear in the Lands Between. We hope you've enjoyed our small look at the fauna of Kaled. Make sure to comment with your favorite enemies to fight when you visit these rotten lands. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of our spooky content. In our next episode, we're going to see what we can learn about an enemy the community hated thoroughly in the early days of Elden Ring the Urtree Burial Watchdogs. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.